Hey everybody, this is Free Sky Steve, the enabler of your RC addiction. And today we're on to episode 3 of the O20 series. And we are talking about setting up a plane for the first time. And because of this topic, I think a lot of people are going to find this O20 series and maybe wonder what it's about. If you haven't enjoyed the video, please consider going back and starting from the episode 1. What we're trying to do is take the setting up a plane, an extensive setup of a plane, and break it down over 20 episodes. And each episode should be around 10 minutes, sometimes runs a little bit longer. But the idea is we don't get into the weeds on any one particular subject. And this is exactly how I would set up a plane if I were working with you one evening. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Uh, we're going to select a plane, and I did think long and hard about which plane we're going to use for the model that we're going to work with in the series, and that turns out to be the Hobby King Grand Tundra. The reason why I like this plane is because the Hobby King Tundra is a very, very, very positively regarded plane, very similar to the, the Horizon Hobby uh, Timber, but the Tundra is a high wing stole plane which has barn door flaps it is also features this really large tires like a bush plane and because of that you can land it on uneven surfaces it's great for landing fields that may not have the best runways or dirt runways or grass or perhaps flying at the beach that type of thing it's a great all-around plane the people who've like the Tundra just absolutely I, I don't think they like it they love it this is one of those planes that people just get into that being said uh, the Grand Tundra I have had the experience to fly it and I do really like the plane it flies great in high wind situations we flew it at Joe Nall uh, the guys at Hobby King allowed me to fly their plane I had a great time with it and I do really like the plane but there is something about the plane that just doesn't quite scale up correctly. And it's not the fault of Hobby King or the way that the plane is designed. It's just the fact that when you start to get into larger versions of a plane, when you go from 1300 millimeters from the Tundra and you take it up to 1700 millimeters, there's some other characteristics which makes it not fly quite as well. And because it doesn't fly as well I guess sometimes people get a little flustered with it and end up selling it off so this is what this whole series is about is taking planes that really are better than they may initially appear to be and trying to make them the most out of them in this particular example I'm going to start to describe why I think that the Grand Tundra has a problem and what we could do to fix it so that this is a plane that you absolutely love. The other reason I like this is that for the beginner, this is a nice, I'd say year two, year three. This is the plane you get um, after you have the Aero Scout, after you have the Apprentice, after you go through and get your timbers and whatever else this is a nice step up plan i think it's going to appeal to a lot of people because of it and also for the guys who's experienced this is a plane that you can throw in the back of your car you could take to the flying field and wouldn't really be embarrassed to fly it is a beloved plane hobby king has well it was sold in july of 2023 and the new owners are putting a ton of money into the planes and their inventory and they bring out a lot of stuff now the tundra was a plane that was sold out for quite a long time so when they introduced the tundra once again in version three it sold out immediately and so regardless of what kind of recession we're in or whatever else the demand for a good quality plane that's inexpensive is always there and the grand tundra is essentially just a larger version of the tundra and we're going to get the most out of it so well further ado let's get into the process now instead of going in and setting this up by hand we're going to use the model wizard let me show you where you find it we're going to hit the airplane icon and we're going to go to model select 
if you go into uncategorize, what will happen is you will not see on this particular one, I have just a ton of models on here, and I say you're supposed to hit the plus icon. Well, you don't see it. I'm going to scroll down a little bit. You think it's this one, but if you hit this, you're just going to create a new folder. So if you go all the way to the bottom, you'll find it. Now, when I go into the tractor fed, what I did is I created different folders, and as you can see, I have fewer models in there. And I want to put it in here, so all I do in this folder is hit the plus icon, create a model. It's going to be an airplane. It's going to be with a non-stabilized receiver. The reason why, yes, normally I would put a stabilized receiver on this plane, simply because I love our stabilized receivers, but we are going to be changing the way that we work with stabilized receivers. We're going to be moving away from the needing to use the Lewis scripts in order to work with the FreeSky stabilized receivers and Ethos 1.5. I don't know, it might be 1.5.12 or 13, somewhere around there. You'll see that we're going to do away with the Lewis script and it's going to be built into the transmitter itself into ethos and you will need to update your stabilized receivers to a new version of the firmware but all in all it's all going to work great but for now we're just going to stick with non-stabilized receiver it has one propeller this is a spot you would go in if you had four engines you put it there and yes this model setup will keep track of everything when it comes to channels this is where I kind of need to make a point, which is traditionally our hobby was based around trying to make everything work with less than six channels. So, you know, 25 years ago, a six channel receiver was considered to be, you know, bourgeoisie. You have big bucks if you can have six or eight channels. And so we tried to make the very most with the fewest number of channels. So we did things like use white cables on ailerons and things like that. And to this day, we're still selling hobby store planes with white cables on them. And you don't need to spend thousands of dollars on a new transmitter. But the one thing you can do, which will make a huge difference, is to go from spending $40 on a TDR6 to $60 on a TDR10. And use those extra channels, get rid of the Y cables. If you need to spend a couple dollars, get servo extension cables. Just work with that. Keep each control surface on one channel. So each control surface has its own channel. And that's what I'm doing, two ailerons. I do believe that this plane, uh, the Grand Tundra, does come without Y cables on the ailerons. So, that's a positive, but it does have a Y cable for flaps, and I encourage you to get rid of the Y cable and plug them into separate channels. It has your traditional tail, so we're going to have one channel for each, because I believe that's how it's set up. And this is the basic setup. We're going to go in now and give it a name. So we're going to call this Grant... Grad, it's a Grad Tundra. All right, Grand Tundra. And we're going to select an image. And just for fun, I'm going to select the wrong image. So I'm selecting this one. I'm going to show you how to fix it. All right, we're going to go, first of all, into Mixer. And you can see, when I go into Mixer, everything, ailerons are on channels 1 and 5. So one is your left aileron from standing behind the plane. The aileron on the left is channel one, right is channel five. We don't have flaps set up. That's gonna be a different video. If I go into ailerons, I will show you that we have the opportunity right here to change channels. You can start to work with this. This is where you set up dual rates. And this is where you set up Expo, even though you don't see Expo right away. Expo is a curve, and we'll talk about that later on. Um, the big thing that you have when you have your ailerons on different channels is you can set up differential. And to me, this is the one thing that will bring this plane back into something that you'll absolutely love. It's just this little thing right here, setting up differential. 
We're going to get into that later on down the road, but for now, we're going to go back and we're going to fix the model image because if you look at the home screen, uh, it says Grand Tundra and I got to beat two. And I want to go in here and go into Edit Model. And this is where you can rename the plane, and this is where you can choose the right image. That image file I found on skyraccoon.com, they have over 4,000 different RC plane models. They review most of them, and they talk about the difficulties, and they have the user manuals for a lot of it. And they also have graphics of all the different planes, and the graphics are sized for different Free Sky radios. I found the one for the X20S, and I just renamed it so I can find it easier in the when I go through the list. But it only took a few seconds, and I love their stuff. I speak highly of their website. This is these two things you can change. You can rename things. You can change the images. Anything else on here? Anything that requires reset all mixes is a dangerous thing because once you have a mixer set up, and we're just spending quite a bit of time setting up mixers, if you were to hit that at the very bottom there, it will erase everything and start over again. So sometimes that's the best solution when you something is so badly messed up, it's best to go in there and just reset the mixer. But for the most part, you don't want to do that. What you want to do is back up your models from time to time so you never have to worry about losing your planes. And with that, we are done with Episode 3. I do thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments.